Greg, Maya, and Betty are not experts, nor do they claim to be. They're just a bunch of nerds who enjoy talking about movies, shows, and current events. So sit back, grab a coffee, relax, and enjoy a brand new episode of All Queued Up. Hey folks, welcome to another episode of All Queued Up. I don't have my notes out, but I do remember that we are a review podcast type of streaming services like Netflix, Amazon, HBO Max, what have you. Uh, I'm your host, Greg Dietz, and with me always is Maya Don Fisher and Betty Badger. How you two been? Maya, you want to go first? Uh, I've been good for the most part. I can't complain. Staying busy. Painting. DMing. Mm, yeah. Hiccuping. <laughs> Painting a really, really nice house, by the way. It is coming along fabulously. She oh, I didn't show very you. Very skilled. I didn't show you the latest pictures from last night, did I? Uh, I think I saw them, but I'll check afterwards. Okay. Um. Uh, personally, I'm having a shit week. Um. Found out my father-in-law's truck was stolen last night, and we had to go hunt it down and file a police report, and the idiot only took it half a mile down the road from where he stole it. And it's not a truck or stealing. It's a 88 Ford that barely runs, and that was a fun adventure last night, let's just say that. So, But other than that, could be worse. What about you, Greg? Uh, it's been been all right, like nothing nothing substantial. Um, uh, my um, my mom's birthday was last Thursday, so we uh, we got together and had a little uh, thing for her on Sunday. And uh, I, I told you both about this, but you know, listeners can know. Uh, with the tragedy that happened in April, my mom has been struggling to try to find something to do. So on Mother's Day, we got her a bunch of um, herbs, and it's been really like good for her mental health, mm. keeping her preoccupied. You said herbs. <laughs> I wish it was that kind of herb, if I'm being honest. Um, that'd be awesome. Uh, hey, starting tomorrow, I can grow four plants. Hey, there you go. Yeah. I know somebody uh, that got a jump start on it. Mm, yeah. I'm, I'm waiting, though. Tomorrow, though. I'm getting my stuff for that today and tomorrow. Getting planted. Uh, Anyway, my little brother calls and he says, what should I get for mom for her birthday? And I said something Raiders related because Raiders is always lands well. We got like 80 Raiders things in the house. I would, some would argue too much. Some would argue not enough. I don't know. Not yeah. enough. <laughs> uh, well, you know, the Raiders are gay now. Just, just, so you know, Maya. Um, I'm proud. I'm proud of that. <laughs> I am proud that my team that I've been following since I was seven years old has the first actively open Gay NFL player in history. Uh, I'm fucking proud of that. I am too. Let me let me finish let me finish this real quick and then I, I'll because that's it's it's fantastic. But I have a couple jokes to tell you. Um. Uh, in no way, shape, or form am I against that. Just uh, if, if everyone if anyone listens to the podcast and knows me, that was a joke. But um. Uh. Anyway, Jeff's I so J- Jeff says that and he was like, okay, I'll look for something. And dad says, actually, what about plants? You know, she's been really into the, into the plants that she's been, she's been uh, growing. And Jeff was like, perfect. I'll get plant stuff. And he fucking shows up with $150 worth of plant stuff. <laughs> like I showed you guys the pictures of, of the plants she got. And then of course, like there was like pots and fucking uh, uh, soil and whatnot. It was really nice. She was, she's all fucking super First happy about it. Those things are needed for plants. <laughs> I just want to make sure it wasn't just plants. But uh, she's fucking ecstatic. She's like, she's been doing all this research on ha- half of the plants she got. But she doesn't need to do any of the research on the succulents or the fern. But she doesn't know how to take care of the, the, the common daisy plant. She doesn't know how to take care of the uh, Mexican. The fuck was that called? Mexican. Why is it, it got to be Mexican? <laughs> Because it's the name. Okay, I'm gonna turn my mic off for a minute. My dad just showed up to pick up my sister, so Okay. Uh the doggy is barking. Um so the jokes that I heard about the the, the gay raider player was uh, the first one was this 
<laughs> was this guy on TikTok. He was gay. It was like, uh, he was like, you fucking asshole. Do you know what this fucking means for me now? Now I have to sit there and pretend I know I give a shit about fucking football because now football's gay. You piece of shit. I couldn't go with well, my entire life. <laughs> so, funny. you know, it is a game of inches after all. Sir, ma'am. <laughs> well, honest. Hold on a second. Uh, the, the other joke you, was uh, it was a guy. Okay? Basically... You okay there? The game of inches thing. Oh, it was it was not what I was expecting. Um, <laughs> the uh, the other joke was a guy basically uh, saying that uh, um, it was like it was like gays during football now. And uh, uh, he was like, hold on, let me see if I can just find it. It's fucking hilarious. Because um, I did download it. Yeah, I got it right here. Did you hear? Did you hear? Football's gay. <laughs> so I was like, me too. Okay, get in line. Which one's Carl? Oh, a touchdown. <laughs> okay. Hi. <laughs> and what are those called? Tight end. Okay. <laughs> Football's been gay this whole time. What the hell? Are you gay? No. <laughs> yeah, I saw the shoes. I was like, nope, those are straight shoes. <laughs> I can't take my eyes off Carl. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, my God, that was a good game. <gasps> that was only the first quarter. <laughs> now, see, this is honestly something I've said for a long time. Football is very homosexual. Look at those men running around in those tight pants. That is the best part of football for me. You know, I to, I don't really watch it. I bet on it, but I don't watch it. But I mean, goodness! Hey, hold on. A <laughs> to be fair, I think uh, uh, a lot of sports have been kind of gay. Um, the biggest one is any form of wrestling, not just like Greek Roman, but yeah. This the is WWE. my daddy. Hello. Hello. Hey. Can we doing? look alike? <laughs> except for the mustache. Yeah, except for the mustache. <laughs> All right. Oh, I'll my. I'll see you later. Dogs are losing their minds. But, yeah, no, it just, it was, it's fucking hilarious. Like, the jokes that people get to make now. And the my, my favorite one was the, the fucking, the gay guy going, how fucking dare you make football... <laughs> Okay, now I have to pretend I know what I'm talking about because I'm gay. It's fucking hilarious. No, because, man, again, I bet on football. I don't watch it. It's, again, I do pretty well. Just, hey, shut your mouth. Doing off the stats, but, you know, no, I have no real desire to watch it. I really don't even know what's going on when I'm at Deacon Tucky's. I still have no idea what I'm watching, so. <laughs> you know what's funny is I, I don't, I like watching football, but I don't care about it. That makes sense. I love watching golf, but you know, it's not like I'm rooting for one player over the other. I'm just like, oh, that was a hard hit. I watched this one on the green, and he totally curved that ball right into the hole, and I was totally impressed because I've been playing golf on uh, PlayStation and you know Xbox since I was like 17. So I, I, that's when I really got into golf. And now I know how hard it is to read that stuff. And I'm like totally impressed. So, yeah, I, I love watching. I don't really care who wins. So fact, if, it, if it weren't for video game sports, I wouldn't know the rules for half of, half of any sport. Yeah. You know, I never in my life thought that I would like golf. But here we are. You know, I mean, I bought the Mario golf game. It's, it's a lot of fucking fun. Oh, they have a Mario Golf game? It just came out last week. What's it for? Switch. Switch. Oh, I don't have a Switch. Um, but that's well, cool. I mean, if it's if it's anything Mario related, it's going to be on the Nintendo console. So. I played one on um, Xbox that I've had for a couple of years. It's 2019 edition. It's yeah. Like when they started getting rid of Tiger Woods because of all the nasty sh stuff that came out about him. So, <sighs> all right. Well, let's get into this episode of Loki, shall we? Let's yeah. Do it. Anyway. Um, for anyone curious, yes, we're going to review episode four of Loki. 
Um, boy, this episode had a lot in it, didn't it? Had a fucking lot. Yes, it did. Uh, I guess we'll just start off at the very beginning. Um, last week, uh, Loki and, and Sylvie were on Laurentis 1. Lamentous one. Lamentous. <laughs> Saying an actor's name. Um, and uh, they were at a point where they realized that they were not going to get off of the planet that was being destroyed or the moon that was being destroyed. Um, I guess a case of both. Uh, and Yeah, uh, it was a planet crashing into a moon. I always get that backwards or whatever, but... Uh, they they were they were basically had accepted that they were going to die, uh, until they created a massive nexus event. Because being of the same person really, uh, and in a way Loki's being narcissistic, fell in love with one another. Yeah, I wondered about that and how it would work with like. Yeah, my brain went weird places with it. Like, you know, DNA wise, would they be too compatible and have like, you know, messed up kids or something? I don't know. This is where my brain was going. That's a good question. <laughs> I have no clue. I mean, it's it's because y'all are I, from different dimensions. Would it would you even be compatible to uh, mate at all and produce offspring? I mean, I'm not saying that's their main purpose in mating. It's just a little weird, a little VC Andrews for my taste, but <laughs> yeah. <you know. laughs> uh, people called it on Twitter incestuous, and I'm like, but they're not technically related. I mean, it's yeah. not incestuous when it's you're with yourself. <laughs> exactly. Everybody needs a little self love, huh? Um, but uh, but yeah, because they created that Nexus event by doing that they uh that's how they were found by the tva and um well, I'm trying to what happened that next other than getting captured. well even even before that scene though we saw a flashback scene of what's the judge's name that mobius you know the main judge what was her name uh, the ravenna renova 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 renslayer Okay, so uh, it shows Renslayer when she was just a hunter, and she actually apprehends Sylvie when she looks like she's maybe eight, nine, ten years old, mm -hmm. yeah. and takes her before the TV, the TVA's court, and that's when she stole the tin pad and escaped. And has been on the run ever since. So she tells Loki she has grown up in thousands of worlds as, as thousands of worlds die. And now she's going to die on one of these endless worlds. And that's when the TVA, they were able to track the Nexus and show up and uh, basically capture them uh, from the clutches of death. Yeah. I forgot about that opening scene. Just like last week, I forgot about the opening scene with uh, Sylvie fucking in C-28's mind. Or was it? Yeah, C-20. 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 Uh, Hit! You've sunk my battleship. <laughs> Son of a fucking bitch. You could have gone with a bingo joke, but there's no C in bingo. So There's what? not. <laughs> but when also, we get the hunter b15 when we get the hunter b15 we will <laughs> c, c c20 that's a massive fucking battleship board <laughs> yeah i know it only goes to 10 <laughs> um but yeah so uh so we're now back in the tva sylvie and loki have been caught and they're in different rooms uh but we focus primarily on mobius and loki um I could watch fucking uh, Tom, wow, Hiddleston. Tom, Tom Hiddleston, Hiddleston. Thank you, Jesus, and Owen Wilson fucking act in a room all goddamn day. That shit is highly entertaining. But uh, their characters basically talking about uh, that that Owen Wilson's character Mobius feels like he's been betrayed because Loki was a friend. Or at least he felt he was a friend. And uh, 
but Loki won't give him any information. So there's, there's the whole aspect of, of, uh, of Mobius wanting information out of Loki and only having one of two options essentially. And, uh, trapping him in like a time loop room with uh lady sif lady which sif. that was super yeah. awesome to see was she in yeah. any of the other marvel productions yeah, oh yeah she was in the first three four she was in the okay, the original thor all three thor movies i yeah. don't that to see i who is she in the marvel universe lady, lady sif. sif yeah she's just she's a member she's of, not uh, thor's wife no Okay. No, girlfriend maybe. Because in North in Norse mythology, she is Thor's wife. Yeah, and Loki cuts off all her hair, and then he has to go, and he basically t tricks a bunch of dwarfs into having a contest of making these wondrous items, and one of them is a wig of pure golden flaxen hair for Sif because he literally shaved her bald. Yeah. And and right. she was Thor's wife. And yeah, so that I guess I just never picked up on who she was because again, my brain goes straight to Norse mythology and it's not the same in Marvel, you know. They pick certain things to be the same, but yeah, that one just it whooshed right over my head. <laughs> Easily done, you're very low to the ground. Yes, I am. <laughs> Most halflings are. Um yeah, I, I don't remember if she's killed in three or not. Uh, I, think or think she, I, I think she was along with the Warriors three. Yeah, I remember the Warriors three death. Uh, but maybe she wasn't. I'm not 100% sure. I haven't watched Ragnarok since the first time I watched it. So, yeah, because I because it's I, I've seen uh, it's Hella. She comes in through the the Bifrost like right before the Rainbow Bridge and um, she kills the big guy. I can't forget really his name for some reason. Hamdal. No, yeah. no, 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 no. The, the the big the 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 chubbier one of the uh, Warriors. Oh, three. of the Warriors three. Um, she doesn't kill because Heimdall's in in uh, Infinity War. So yeah, that's yeah. where he dies. But uh, yeah, she comes in. She kills him first, then kills um. The smaller one that wears partially green and gold, and then kills the third one. And I'm drawing a blank on their names because the the uh, it's Ray, fuck Ray Waz. Ray Waz as the big was the the chubbier one, and then it's um the guy who did and made uh I think he was in Chuck. <laughs> Why am I drawing a blank on his name? I gotta look it up now. Oh uh, well, anyway. it's it's Fandral Hogan and Volstag. Yeah, so Hogan was killed first. I thought Volstag was the big one. Warriors. Hogan. Three. Hogan is the yeah. Asian one, and Fandral is the Zachary Levi. Is Fan Hogan. Yeah. Okay. Hogan is is uh, to Dan to Danbu Asano. And the Volstag is Ray Stevenson, and Ray, Ray Stevenson, Stevenson is always Ray Stevenson's always in my mind because he was he played the Punisher at one point. Um, That's right. And Lady Sif was not in that room, so I don't think we saw her death. Okay, well, let's get back to Loki because I just I wasn't yeah. sure if she had been in the other ones because again, that's that's not the image I have in my head. So now I know, and I feel better. Well, the, the one thing about that scene, by the way, was uh, Loki's reaction to seeing her at first. Um, like he was really excited. He was like, he was, <laughs> he's like uh, Lady Sif. Like he was all, he's all fucking, you know, childlike in the way that he said her name. And I was just like, that kind of struck a chord because I was like, oh, that poor guy. <laughs> Everything Loki's been through. Uh, and then she's holding that clutch of her hair, and you know, starts yelling at him punches him in the face knees him in the groin punches him in the face again and walks off and yeah. then here she comes back and does it the exact same way again and he's like oh time loops great <laughs> yeah he starts talking to uh oh talking to mobius about doing this and whatnot and it was uh 
it was a pretty funny scene, especially when we get to the, like the final part before Mobius walks back in, and uh, <laughs> he's just on the ground and. Uh, she comes in and he's like, he's begging for her to not do it. It's so fucking funny. Yeah, he's like, I'm a narcissist and I'm probably always going to be alone, but it's only because I'm afraid. I'm such a narcissist. I'm afraid. And, and then she's like, just walks off and doesn't hit him because he got through to her. You know, at first yeah. he was trying to say, you're just a construct uh, derived from a memory and you're punishing me over and over again. That didn't work. No. But it was... It's like, oh, he's making progress. In the meantime, we have Sylvie locked up in another room. And Mobius goes to meet with Renslayer. And she's like, congratulations on a case closed. Uh, I, and, and it was at that right before that happened when he was throwing Loki into the time loop. He said, the TVA has been lying to you all along. You were you had a life before this. You're a variant. <clears throat> so when Mobius is meeting with Renslayer and they're closing out the case, he takes when Renslayer's not looking, he takes her temp pad and switches his out with hers. And he goes because he's trying to find out what happened to Hunter C twenty because he's wanting more information about Sylvie. And yeah. Renslayer says Hunter C twenty is deceased. You know, she her mind it just went. She He's like, she seemed fine. He's like, yeah. she deteriorated. He finds out that she remembered everything and she remembered she had a life and sees the video footage of her being pruned and Ridden Slayer covering it up. Yeah. And in the Which, while that's going on, B15 uh, goes to Sylvie. And says, when you enchanted me, you woke something up in my mind. Did you make that up? And she's like, I can't create memories. That was real. That was part of your life from before. And she said, show me. And she shows her her life. And she's like, I was happy. And yeah, that made me yeah. cry. That was really sad, yeah. Because it shows that there's something going on with the, the TVA that's way more nefarious than previously thought. Like yeah. obviously it was nefarious, but like they're they're just taking variants that are happy. There there's something more more uh, uh, totalitarian about them than I guess we thought or anybody else thought because something I wasn't expected happens shortly after that, and it's Loki is in the time loop again, and uh, Mobius comes in and is just like you're right. You were hundred percent right. Something's going on, and uh, and then the next scene, I was like, "Oh no, no way!" <laughs> they uh, Mobius wants to help Loki. Says to Loki, "You know, we need to go get Sylvie, and you two can take this whole place down." They go out outside of the time loop, and Ren Slayer and a bunch of soldiers are there, and uh, and then Mobius says something that everyone had thought previously and that was he he's like i had a life before this maybe i had a jet ski yeah i was like, I was like oh he totally did have a jet ski <laughs> and then she pruned yep yeah that messed with me hard i was like no and then Good storytelling though it's great yeah. fucking storytelling and then they, they capture Loki. And this was what confused me is when they capture Loki and then they go get Sylvie, I'm like, why are they keeping those two alive? Like, what exactly do the timekeepers want with these two? Like, if they're such a threat and dangerous, you would think that the timekeepers would just want them pruned. They would solve their problems. But instead, they're taken to the chamber with the three uh, omnipotent beings that are, are the timekeepers. Um, and after a lengthy fight... With the help of uh, B28, B20, B15. whatever, B15. B15. Uh, fucking Christ. Um, uh, with the help of her, they take down the guards and Renslayer, and then fucking Sylvie hucks her sword through the head of the central timekeeper. And it's a fucking robot, which I was not expecting. Genuinely. I thought maybe they weren't technically there or something else was going on. 
not expecting a robot. I was like, wow, okay. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure what the fuck's going on, you know, because... Well, neither yeah, they. Well, yeah, that's the thing. These, these timekeepers are, you know, also androids of a sort. You know something, though, has to be controlling them. And, you know, again, I hope they wrap this up and let us know what's going on because I'm confused. Um, I think... I think the 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 thing to keep in mind about like that scene is I believe the timekeepers are still real mm-hmm. and that the, those robots are only there for the exact reason that we saw. Yeah. Yeah, they're just placeholders while, you know, to dispense timekeeper orders and keep people in line. Yeah. Without the timekeepers actually being there. Exactly. Um, cause I believe in the comics, they were able to kind of like be there without being there by, by astral projection or some shit like that. Um, that only, only a few times where they actually like physically in the room with everybody. And that one of those times is when the, um, the, the, uh, tribunal, the fucking, what's his name? Uh, living tribunal, living tribunal. Thank you. Showed up and was just like, stop it. You stop it. Um, I don't think the Living Tribunal will be in this show in any way, shape, or form. Uh, it is a possibility that the person that's controlling everything and made those robots could be Kang the Conqueror, but I still don't think that'll be the case. I think that the only time we'll actually see him is uh, in uh, Wasp. Amen. Yeah, Amen and the Wasp. Quantum Mania. But. We'll see. I don't know for sure. Obviously, I don't know for sure. So, uh, but yeah, right after that scene, and they're trying to figure out the head, and Loki is about to say something to Sylvie that you know would have been romantic, I guess. He something is pretty like that. It's definitely he's sentimental. Yeah, definitely sentimental. Um, but yeah, he's pruned. He's uh, Renslayer wakes up and fucking sticks the the pruning stick in his back making him disappear. And I just kind of went, and now my first thought, my legit first thought at that was, okay, so this goes with the idea that even Maya said earlier. And that was that, um, uh, the, they're going to eliminate him and replace him with her for the long term. That's what, that's what I thought. Uh, she puts the, like, uh, uh, Sylvie puts the pruning stick, but with the, did she was she pointing the pruning part or the fucking the, the spear the part. part? Was she pointing the spear, spear part? Either way. Oh, Renslayer? Renslayer? No, no. She had she had the pruning part at her, and Renslayer says okay. do it. And she's yeah. like, No, you're gonna tell me everything. Yep. Yeah. And uh then it goes to credits. And I sat there and I went, Dad, there's no way that's it. There's mm-hmm. absolutely no way that's it. We ha- there's more. Um and uh sure enough, there was an end credit scene. With possibly my favorite shot of the show so far. <laughs> uh, Loki wakes up in some location. He's not dead. And he says, he looks up and he sees people and they, um, he says, am I dead? And they go, no, but if you don't come with us, you will be. It then pans up or does a shot and it shows this this large black dude who's wearing what looks like Loki armor, but like makeshift. And then a hammer that's made out of like, steel and a fucking wrench. Um, like I paused it, I analyzed it. And then to the far left of him is, or far right. Yeah. Far, far right. Of right. Him, it's uh, Richard Grant dressed in mm-hmm. a Halloween th- uh, th- uh, Loki costume is what I'll best describe it as. Uh, it uh, looks like the original Loki outfit from the comics in the sixties. It does. It does. It does. Um, the reason I say Halloween though, is it's not, you know, spandexy. <laughs> like it looks like it's just, you know, a Halloween costume, which I love. I fucking love that it's that. In the center is what I'm going to describe as Kid Loki, who is holding Alligator Loki. <laughs> so what makes me super excited about that is I fucking love alternate versions of things. Absolutely mm-hmm. love it. 
So the fact that we're getting like the Loki verse is oh, it's so fucking. I'm so happy. I'm so fucking happy. Yeah, I'm very curious. I, I was so happy with that end scene because that gives me hope for you know Owen Wilson, who has also been pruned. Yeah. Um, but you know, yeah, this it, it that's a twist I did not see coming. So I'm really impressed, and I'm yeah, I'm very excited for next week. Oh, same here. I. Uh gotta be a whole week away i love that they got richard grant to come in for the show by the way yeah <laughs> i had no clue he was gonna be in it fucking no clue um what i'm also curious about is like if that's just the welcoming party if there are other loki's there with them by the way did you notice that the background is destroyed new york because on the far yeah, uh, right next to absolutely richard, obliterated yeah uh, there's the avengers tower I didn't notice that, but I did notice it was a very dystopian looking place they were in. Yeah. Um, it certainly wasn't up to code. Yeah. That's, yeah. <laughs> so my, my dad's eyes are so bad that we, we, cause we went back cause we were both shocked and he was like, go back to that. Pause it on that screen. I was like, all right. So I pause it and we're looking at it and he goes, so I see, I see the black guy that's Loki. And I was like, I don't even know if that's actually technically Loki. He just has Loki armor on and is holding a hammer that is made out of stuff. Like it looks like a makeshift Molnir. And he was like, he was like, or, or yeah, me and me. Um, and he was like, that's super weird. And I go, well, that could just be that variant Loki. I don't know. Um, and then we got Richard Grant over here wearing, you know, a party city outfit, which is fantastic. Uh, and then we got Kid Loki, who I'm I'm just gonna refer to him as Kid Loki. And dad goes, well, What else would you call him? I was like, Yeah, I don't know. Not, I don't know yet. Juvenile Loki. <laughs> Ju Ju Juvenile Loki. Um, and then you got alligator Loki, and he goes, Alligator Loki. And I was like, Yeah, he's holding an alligator that has Loki horns on. And he was like, I don't see that at all, Greg. I'm like, How do you not see the alligator, Dad? And he's like, I don't see an alligator. I'm like, so I had to get up and like outline it. And he goes, That's an alligator? I'm like, your eyes, you need to see the optometrist for fuck's sake. Um, but, uh, and that's when, like, I was describing that I noticed the Avengers tower on the far right of the screen. Mm -hmm. And he was like, how do you know that's the Avengers tower? And I was like, the exact same shape. That's, that's the helipad area. And he was like, he was like, oh, oh shit. That is New York. <laughs> yep. So we'll see how that plays out next week. Hell yeah. I'm excited. Yeah, same here. I really, this was I'm really... a really fast-paced but information-packed episode. Oh, yeah, the fucker was like 50 minutes long. I was like, okay, all right. Give me everything. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say about it. I mean, it's, it's fucking wonderful. This is, this is easily the best show that they've done so far, it's a, for me. Uh, also... Did you two hear about the? Um, it was it was like right after last week's ending. Um, people noticed some kind of like spectral form floating down from the mountains at the uh, the final scene in Wandavision. No. no. So in the shot that it's zooming in on the cabin that she's in, on mm -hmm. the far left of the screen, coming down the mountain, you can see a spectral form, and. Uh, this this was very odd to everybody because on the far right of the screen, as it's zooming in, you can see a bunch of added trees. Like if you remember, it's a large clearing that she's in. Well, they shortened they 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 lessened that clearing by adding a bunch of trees. And then on the far uh, left of the screen, you can see that spectral form coming down as it gets closer to the cabin. Everyone's analyzing it, going, "Is it Doctor Strange? Is it Vision? Like, what the fuck is that? Like, why is that there? Why did Disney go in and alter it? Like, what is happening?" Well, the true answer is a lot less interesting. <laughs> uh, it's a VX fuck up. Of course. Um, yeah, they uh, as you're as you're zooming in on the cabin, there is a spot next to um, Elizabeth Olsen's head that had like a little bit of a mirror. And if you like pause at the right point, you could see the camera or see the boom mic or something like that. They didn't want that. So they wanted to fix that. And while they were there, I guess they were like, let's add trees. Um, that 
spectral form is actually the cover up for that for that that mirror. <laughs> And it just it just tracked the entire time as it was coming down the mountain. <laughs> hmm. um, yeah, a bunch of v VXF analysts were just like, nope, that's just the fuck up. Uh, but it does raise the question, why were trees at it? Like, what was the point of that? People have been analyzing the scene trying to find anything in there. And I'm like, I'm like, first off, y'all need to actually chill because there might not be anything at all. But uh what I'm kind of hoping happens, what I kind of want to see is that since this show is creating Nessus events and that the TVA might be gone, that suddenly retroactively Disney's like adding weird shit to old shows. We're adding know. mutants, adding mutants to the MCU. Possibly. I mean, they had the opportunity with... Uh, Ralph Boner, but Boner. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know how they're gonna add in mutants to the MCU. I don't think it'll be through Nexus events. If I'm being honest, I really, really don't. I don't think we're getting mutants until until Phase Five. It's hard to say. Hard to say. Um. Because they've, they've already announced everything that's coming out in Phase 4. And unless it's like some kind of special after credit scene, I just don't see it happening. I do know that seeing Wong versus fucking Abomination in the uh, Shang-Chi tra Shang trailer was weird. And awesome. Oh, very awesome. Primarily weird just because it's like... It, I, I wouldn't have expect, expected to see uh, Abomination at all for that scene. Yeah. But um, if that like if that's their way of tying it into the larger MCU, great. I thought by calling it the Ten Rings would have been enough, but here we are. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to think of anything else to, to add to the Marvel conversation because... I'm I'm I, like I'm in love with Loki. I it's such a great fucking show. This episode was packed with information. Like this episode 100% made it accurate that Mobius was a person who loved jet skis. <laughs> oh yeah. I hope he's on a world with a bunch of Mobiuses. <gasps> Okay, in the comic, Mobius has a bunch of versions of himself. There are multiple Mobiuses within the TVA. I think that's how they're bringing multiple Mobiuses into this. So I hope you're ready for multiple Owen Wilsons. Oh, I love it. Oh, <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> wow. Wow, 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 <laughs> wow. Oh, fuck it. That, I didn't even think about that until now. I'm very excited. Oh, that's exciting. All right, let's give a grade to this. And... Uh, I don't know what to discuss next. So, uh, Betty, why don't you go ahead and go first? Uh, I give it an A plus. Again, this one was it was a little bit longer, but there was a lot of information in it. It was well written. Uh, lots of shocks to be had. I mean, it, it is it's an impressive show. I mean, so far they are doing really, really well, and they're still keeping me intrigued. So yeah, I'm definitely going to keep giving it that A plus until they mess it up. But I don't think they're going to. There's only two episodes left. So, what about you, Maya? Uh, I give it an A again. Uh, I mean, it's really, really good. But I just don't think it's been to that stellar level for me just yet. But visually, I love it. I love the whole retro future look of the TVA when they're there. It was nice to see them back there again. Um, you know, a little Deus, a Deus Ex Machina for uh, their last second rescue at the beginning. So that kind of was like, well, they had to do it somehow. I guess that's the that's you know the only way they could do it. But other than that. You know, loving everything about this show. It's a lot of fun. It makes you think, and it makes you think, hmm, well, 
Loki's dumped onto a world with more variants of himself. Maybe Mobius is dumped onto a world with more variants of himself. And we'll see, hopefully, what happens, you know, next week. But I'm really digging the ride that it's taken us on. Yeah, me too. Um, I will argue one thing on the uh, Deus Ex Machina in the beginning of the episode. Last week, everybody, not just you, Maya, was saying that last week's episode reminded them a lot of Doctor Who. Mm -hmm. In that same light, that Deus Ex Machina reminds me of Doctor Who. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, and it works. It works. You know, it's just sometimes it's a little too on the nose. That's in, in In this, I think it was just a little too on the nose. That's all right. I mean, I... I, I uh... I thought it was a very clever way of getting them off that planet or sorry, off that moon uh, by, cr by them basically being of the same person. And because they felt emotions for one another, I won't say they fell in love, but because they had strong attachment to one another suddenly, especially with them and the imminent you know threat of dying uh, causing that Nexus event. I was just like, Oh wow. That's a really fucking smart way to handle that. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong. It is totally Deus Ex Machina. I'm not even remotely arguing that, but I definitely thought it was very clever, a very clever way to handle it. Uh, that being said, uh, I'm, giving the, I'm giving the episode an A+. Uh, again, I, I cannot stress this enough. You give me characters that I love, and then you give me alternate versions of them, or you give me this, this idea of alternate realities, a multiverse, if you will, I'll eat that shit up all day. Uh, I don't know if my favorite uh, uh, Spider-Man movie is Into the Multiverse because of multiple versions of Spider-Man or if it's just a great fucking movie, but like it is the best Superman or Superman, Spider-Man movie. Uh, again, some of my favorite fucking DC stories are when Flash goes to alternate realities or when the uh, the Justice League has to deal with that evil version of themselves. Um, uh, I just, I love that shit. I fucking love that shit. So the fact that this show is doing that and like gave me every uh, possible amount of serotonin for the final shot. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. I uh, cannot fucking love this show more. I just, it's, I don't think it's possible. I don't think it's possible. Um, it's also the only show that my dad and I are legitimately like, we cannot wait for Wednesday to roll around or to, well, like it's Tuesday for me, for me, but we'll sit there and watch last week's episode before we watch the current episode every fucking Tuesday night. Loving rolls cool. around. Yeah. Um, it's just a fun show. It's like, again, it's like you said of it being, uh, um, very Doctor Who esque, and I think that helps it immensely. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I'm not saying that it's a bad thing. I mean, I love Doctor Who. It's one of my favorite yeah, shows. One hundred percent. I was gonna say that I, if if you were to tell me that the people who wrote this show also wrote for Doctor Who, I'd believe you. Like, I don't know. I could gush about this show for hours. It's 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 easily one of my favorite fucking shows. I love it. So but we don't have that kind of time. So, um, well, why don't we go ahead and wrap up? Because I know that uh, Betty's got to take off here soon. It is, yeah, she's got a she's got a packed afternoon. Yeah, very packed afternoon, and a uh, hundred percent understandable. Like, yeah, hundred percent understandable. Um, well, everybody, I think it's going to do us for today. Uh. Again, if you're not watching Loki, what the fuck are you doing? Um, uh, let next week's episode five, obviously. If we add anything, make sure you check out the socials, which will be below the video. Um, uh, if uh, I, I, I like, I'll be doing. I'll talk about that later. But yeah, if we if we add something, that's how you're gonna find it. Uh, we'll, uh, check out the store on Teespring. <laughs> You don't have your notes up. Forgetful. No, I have them up. I'm just I'm just trying to test myself to see if I remember them. Turns out I don't. Uh, um, yeah, I could have told you that for some merch. 
Can I can I give the speech, Maya? Can I can I talk? That's when you say yeah. no. No, you can't. Um. Anyway, everybody, check out the store. That's where you'll find a lot of the merch. Did you uh, get around to adding uh, like tank tops? I did not. I was busy. I forgot. I was Sorry. busy and That's, forgot. I just. I didn't want to say that you can get tank tops there when they're not there yet. So, but. Go check it out, and if there are, if there are tank tops, you can get some summer wear. That's that's all I'm getting at. Uh, also, the YouTube channel uh, we promote it every week. Um, I have uploaded some uh, some reviews on there. I think recently was Modoc and the Borat one. Borat. Mm -hmm. That's it, right? Yeah, because I'm gonna yeah. add. I just watched Luca. I'm gonna do a review of that. Um. There was another thing I watched that I'm going to do a review of, but I don't remember what the fuck it was. But anyway, yeah, Luca, and I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to tie in or get uh, in the Heights and Wish Dragon done today, so that way I can do reviews of all three of those and have those uploaded. Uh yeah. Nice. So yeah, yeah. Um, so make sure you go check that out. Plus, if you listen to the podcast on a streaming platform, like go to the YouTube channel, give it a like, a follow, um, make a comment. You could just say hi for all we care. It just helps the algorithm, helps us out. So, um, yeah, that's it for that part. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. Maya, where can folks find you? I think you can find me on Facebook under my name. It's a public profile, so it's easily located. Uh, if you want to follow me on Twitter or Instagram, you can do so through my Facebook page because it is linked publicly. If you want to catch me on other shows aside from this one, I'm on two podcasts on the Realm of Collectors YouTube channel every other Wednesday night at 9.30 p.m. Eastern on Figure Banging. Brand new episode this week. Go check it out. And every Friday night at 9 p.m. Eastern on Nerd Life Syndicate, uh, where we talk about all the latest in pop culture and entertainment uh, news Toys, movies, comics, TV shows, uh, all kinds of different things. So it's a lot of fun. And we we joke around and crack on each other pretty hard, usually at Russ's expense, but not always. But yeah, check it out. Subscribe. But also subscribe to our YouTube channel, too. Yeah. Just saying. Do both. It's all free. Mm -hmm. you know, it takes you a couple Yeah, of it clicks. doesn't cost you anything. Just a few seconds of your time. But that's where everybody can find me. What about you, Betty? Uh, you can find me on Facebook at Betty Badger Ogletree. You can find me at Twitter at Bright Betty. And uh, I recently opened an Etsy store, and you can find me there under the Artistic Unicorn. What about you, Greg? Um, you can follow me on all socials under Chubb Rock Geek. You can find me uh, doing a podcast with my buddy Anthony. Uh, called Mission Star Podcast, where we talk about video game stuff. We just did an episode here Sunday um, where we just kind of go over a few things. We don't really, it's not like I, we talk about Fast and Furious 9. We talk about uh, some gaming news that happened. I think I mentioned Mario Golf, the new one that came out. Mm -hmm. um, so if that's something you're interested in, check that out. Uh, that's Mission Star Podcast and the 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 video version will be on our website, which our, our our YouTube, which is Mission Start Tubes. Um, we even have a funny story about the name that uh, or the URL that we had for Mission Start. Like it's a, it's a pretty interesting story from Anthony's perspective because like someone bought the name of our website, but we still had control over it. It was very bizarre. So um, he tells that story. It's pretty funny. But yeah, if that's something you're interested, check that out. Um, but that's it for me at the moment. Um, Guys, next week, like I said, we're going to be watching Loki episode five. It'll be the penultimate episode to the uh, to this whole series, which is, again, as you can tell by the way we talk about it, fucking fantastic. Uh, I really, really, really hope they can stick the landing because it'd be really awful if the show had a terrible ending. Um, but uh, but yeah, that's it. That's that's that, that that's it, and that's all. Everybody, be a decent human being. You know, you're, you're at the grocery store and someone's behind you. Let them, you know, if they have a couple items and they're behind you in line, let them in front of you. Uh, tell somebody short they're nice, that the shirt's nice. Tell, tell somebody that their hair looks nice. Make someone smile. 
That's all you have to do. Um, but that's it. We'll see you, we'll see you next week. All right. Peace, love, and polypops, everybody. Take care, everybody. <laughs>